it's Cliff and I don't really know what to think about this one. So I figured I would post it here and you can tell me your thoughts down below in the comments. So if you haven't heard recently in the news, Zach Prince, who is the CEO of failed company BlockFi popped back up. So one thing I can say about Zach Prince is I don't think he's necessarily as malicious as someone like Alex Mashinsky or Sam Bankman Freud. I don't, I don't really put him in the same category, but he still didn't lead a failed organization. One thing I can say is if you lost say $200,000, into BlockFi, you probably have a whole different opinion about Zach Prince than someone who didn't lose any money. If you lost that amount of money, you probably want to see him 10 feet under, but that's a different story. I'm going to try and paint this as objectively as I can because I don't necessarily think that he's a bad guy. I think he's just a terrible CEO. So Cliff, why do you think he's a terrible CEO? Well, as BlockFi was going under, they were still telling people to invest in BlockFi. They were putting out tweets that BlockFi was fine. Don't worry about it. Keep investing your money into BlockFi. And if you still want those tweets, they're archived on Reddit. I was looking them up on his X account here today, but as you can see, he has completely scrubbed his X account where nothing is there. And one of the problems that I had with him as BlockFi was going down, he completely went radio silent. I was wanting to show you that back in 2022, he just stopped posting. He didn't want to put any information out. They were just completely quiet about the situation. And that's why he's a bad CEO. He went from everything is fine. Don't worry about it to completely radio silent when people knew that obviously there was an issue going on. Now that's the tall tale signs of a bad leader, in my opinion. Uh, sure, there's going to be some certain things that he can't say. His lawyers are probably telling him to be quiet, but you could give some information up. You can't just go radio silent and expect people to think that you're still a good CEO. So again, I just wanted to show you he completely scrubbed his ex profile here as he completely moved on. Now, Cliff, why else would he be a bad CEO? Well, he made a terrible decision, in my opinion, on how he handled the collapse of BlockFi. What am I meaning by that? Here's an article here. It says BlockFi increased some executive salaries after wipeout of equity stakes. So what happened there? Basically, during this period that he went radio silent, they decided that they were going to sell all of their stakes at the very bottom. They sold Bitcoin at the very bottom. And didn't tell any of their customers that they were going to do this. They just did it. And then when they sold at the very bottom, they decided that their executives needed a 40% salary increase to keep them because of retention. Somehow they had some proprietary information that they couldn't afford to let these people go, even though the company was already bankrupt, it was shutting down. They needed to retain these people. So of course they needed to increase their salaries from customer funds to keep them. And so we know all of these crypto exchanges and their CEOs are absolute losers who frauded people and made terrible decisions. In this case, I don't think Zach Prince is a fraud. I just think he's a bad CEO, again, for obviously selling at the bottom and not informing his customers that he was actually going to do this or tweet anything, tell them any information. Imagine you're holding 200K in this account and he won't give you any information. Of course, you're going to be panicked. Of course, you're going to have a different picture of Zach Prince. So why even bring him up? Well, he's back in the news. That's why. So after not posting anything on his X account since 2022, he pops up two days ago and he says this. I'm starting a new role and will be announcing it publicly tomorrow in advance, given that I've been off Twitter for a bit in order to let BlockFi's bankruptcy process process evolve without distraction, I wanted to share a few thoughts about BlockFi and what I've learned. So again, he's admitting he spent two plus years away from his Twitter account and not giving any of his customers any information. He just left them in panic. He says, Seeing the company I founded in a bankruptcy was devastating, but the hardest part was knowing that the event caused distress for BlockFi's clients, employees, investors, and partners. Every action I've taken since the filing for bankruptcy has been with the focus of recovering as much value as possible for BlockFi's clients. I've had a lot of time to reflect on things that I could have done better or differently. And of course, with hindsight being 2020, there are plenty of things I would change. However, the single most important decision to change was also the most elusive, identifying the fraud at FTX and avoiding the exposure that we had to their platform. So 
at least he's admitting his faults and not being the best leader. And of course I do blame FTX is the whole reason why BlockFi went under. You know, you're taking funds from a company that didn't actually have the funds to loan you. And obviously that created this big disaster for all of these CeFi companies. So that's where I come to this. I'm like, do we blame him? I mean, technically, he is the guy who led the bad decision to take money from FTX, which makes him, again, a terrible CEO because you're the leader of the company, you own the decision. You are the fall guy, no matter what. You will carry this with you forever because you are the leader. He goes on to say, I testified at the SBF trial, which was helpful in terms of enabling justice through a guilty verdict. But the real goal and focus for me and the remaining BlockFi team was and remains to return as much value to clients as possible. Distributions for BlockFi wallet account holders have already taken place at a 100% recovery. Initial distributions for interest account clients started recently and have the potential to reach 100%, but the final amount won't be known or distributed until distributions occur from the FTX estate. From what I've seen, the BlockFi bankruptcy is among the fastest and least expensive for large crypto bankruptcies, which is a testament to the quality of the work from the BlockFi team and the other professionals involved. So he's trying to claim here that there, people are getting a 100% recovery, which is not true, especially as you see Bitcoin is spiking right now. We are at a very new all time high in Bitcoin. So for them to say they're getting 100% recovery, that's not true. He's kind of doing that CEO fraud jargon. Really, they're getting about 25% like all of the others. Continuing, he says, with estate distributions in flight and knowing the FTX estate recoveries are trending in a positive direction, which combined with the settlement in BlockFi's favor announced last week should have a positive impact on BlockFi estate recoveries. I felt that I finally had a appropriate amount of closure to move on to new professional endeavors. So he's saying, I'm getting out of this, y'all. Deuces, right? <laughs> Time to move on to bigger and better things. Sucks to suck that you lost all your money in my failed company, but you know, I got a living to make. I kept substantially all of my crypto at BlockFi and gave up my recovery rights to increase the recovery pool for clients. I also agreed to provide unpaid ongoing cooperation to BlockFi estate for anything they may need my help with. Thanks for reading. If you made it this far, we'll try and answer questions here if folks have them and it's a subject I'm able to speak to. So I'm just looking at this and I'm like, yeah, okay. The guy has to move on. Like, I get it. He can't not work ever again. Sure, that's gonna be a thing, right? He has to work, okay. He's not as malicious as Alex Mashinsky where that's somebody I believe should be in jail, right alongside with SBF. He should be straight in jail. So I thought this was important because this guy is pointing out that nobody is getting 100% of their funds back. That is some CEO bullshit that this guy is trying to feed you. And he says, thanks Zach. To clarify, a full recovery does not mean you recover the full asset. Meaning if I had one BTC on the platform, I don't receive one BTC. It's the 16K based on the closing price at that date. So effectively 0.23 BTC on today's price, correct. And he, Zach admits, correct. You're not getting 100% of your funds back. Obviously, that's not going to happen. <laughs> so you're getting about 23%, 25%, like I was saying, back. He's just trying to throw some numbers out there to make himself seem like he's the good guy, or maybe that's what he tells himself to make himself sleep better at night. So this guy is putting BlockFi in his past, which of course, uh, sure, at some point he has to, I guess, but what is he moving on to? So I pulled up his LinkedIn and he says here, excited to announce that I've joined the team at our Ecoseg as CEO, our ECOSEG provides cost segregation studies to real estate investors. Cost segregation studies enable real estate investors to take advantage of tax benefits by accelerating depreciation. So that's where I'm mind blown. This guy went from CEO of a company that he majorly fucked up, right? You failed. You are the worst kind of leader. And they moved him into a position where he is CEO of a new company. Who is actually going to invest in this company? 
He's a failed CEO, one of the biggest of failures, right? This was huge in the news 2022, right? And now he's head of some real estate company that's supposed to help you save on taxes. That sounds like a service that people don't need already. You could just go to your tax guy. I don't need a separate business for that. Everybody knows that if you have real estate, of course, there's many ways that you can save on your taxes. I, I'm not arguing that, but this seems like something that nobody really needs. You can structure your taxes on your own. I also found it absolutely hilarious that people were posting in the comments of his LinkedIn if this was another rug pull. <laughs> he quickly deleted all of that, but I don't know. I got a good chuckle out of it. I don't know if this guy is scared of litigation in the US, but he moved himself to the Philippines, right? So I don't know if he's trying to do something weird where he's hoping to avoid uh, litigation. Like we know we're gonna see with Alex Mashinsky. I don't know if he's scared that maybe this is gonna come back on him, you know, possibly it could. And so he's moved himself directly to the Philippines and that's actually confirmed here. He's, this guy says, is Zach based in the Philippines now? And Nick. Huber says, yes, he is located to Manila as part of the contract for this new company as being CEO. So he's bailed on the US completely. He has ran away. He's running far away from this issue because he's he's running away from tweets like this that are always going to haunt him that say highly disingenuous calling this a 100% recovery. The reality is individuals are getting back only 25% of their BTC, which was lost in BlockFi. So that's pretty much it. You tell me in the comments, do we hate this guy forever? I mean, if you're someone that probably has 200K locked up in BlockFi, you're probably gonna hate this guy to the grave. Or is it okay to just, the guy has to move on. He has to make his money. You know, he, he made some bad decisions, but we shouldn't never let him work again because of it, right? does seem a little sketchy that he's immediately a CEO after such failed decisions, but I don't know. Let me know what you think. If you found this interesting, please check out my Patreon below. And as always, thank you for watching.